One of the main benefits of using Simumatic is that you will join a community of users that can create systems and components and share them with each other. This way you can quickly create systems by reusing components that others have created. But sometimes this is not enough, you will need to create your own components or modify existing ones to fill your needs. In this video we are going to introduce you to component creation. Hi and welcome to the Simumatic channel. My name is Mikkel and I'm bringing this tutorial for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a like if you enjoyed the video. Read the description because we have some details there and some information it may be helpful for you. And write us a comment telling what you think or if you have any question. So now let's get started. We log in into the platform and select a profile and jump into the workspace. Once here, we are going to create a demo system just to do this tutorial. And we are going to check the library of components. We are going to browse some components to show actually how we build the components. So in Simumatic, anything can be a component from a simple button or switch like this one to a robot, motor, sensor, PLC, whatever you can imagine. One, once you click on one component, you can open what we call the component editor. And here you can see three tabs. In the first one, you can see the metadata and the assets that are linked to that component. Assets are part of that component. It could be a texture, it could be the symbol, uh, the behavior script uh, that we will see later, or a 3D asset. Even documentation can be uploaded as an asset. Then we have the editor where we can, uh, it's the tool where we can def define different elements that will describe this component. And we can also see how it looks like. We can define the symbol and set the ports, write the behavior script. And finally, we have the tab, which is the XML tab, in which we see the raw data that has been created for this, uh, to define, to describe this component. So everything we do here at the end, it becomes an XML file, which is actually what is saved in the cloud to describe your component together with all these assets. So anything can be uh, a component. We see here that it's exactly the same window, but with more elements, uh, depending uh, the component you are selecting or you are building. As I say, anything, a robot, a motor, you will have different kind of elements here, depending the component you are building. So here we have, for example, a sensor. So a lot of uh, the process to learn how to use or how to build component is about understanding all these elements that can be introduced here in the component editor to make uh, the digital twin of your component. So what we are going to make now we are going to select just one of the components and we are going to create a clone of it which is the easiest way to create a new component so instead of creating a component from scratch you can take one that looks or is similar to the component that you want to create and then you make a clone of it make some modifications so at the end, it uh, represents the new component you want to create. So to do that, we just select a public component or maybe another private component you have. You click on clone, you give it another name. We just call it Spock small clone. And now you see we can do whatever we want with this component because it's actually our component now. We can go back to the library browser and now within our components we see this new component. So 
what we are gonna make now is we are gonna change the size of this component let's say we are gonna make it a bit bigger we change a little bit the uh, description and we are going to make some modifications here just to illustrate how easy it is to edit a component so we need to change the appearance so it's gonna be a bit bigger than this box we say 400 millimeters height so we are gonna come here and select the size and change it to 0 0.4 instead so we made it a bit higher be careful because we just change its appearance but we need to change also its collision shape and you see here when i click in this button we can toggle the collision shape we see that the collision is still smaller than the visual aspect so we need to come here to another element inside the component and replace it with another value the new value 0 0.4 now it matches the collision with the 3d appearance so we could save this and make, let's change also the texture so we are gonna modify the texture we are using with another one which is which will make it look like stone and you see here automatically the texture is applied here in this element so we just change the file override the file in this case and we made it uh, of a stone let's also take a capture to change the thumbnail great we save everything and you see here that now we made our own component a bit different of the previous one we can go back now to the oh let's let's introduce it to our library so we can introduce it in the workspace and now back in the workspace let's add an assembly at the first component we use uh, as a base so we can go to the products we can see this public box we use and we can also add the component we just created which will be now in the within our components and I add it to the favorite ones and here it is so now we have two components and you see that they behave as suspected now you can create a new component from scratch so we are gonna click here at component but instead of selecting one we are gonna click on create and we are gonna call it with new comp and as soon as you click ok you will enter the editor so what we are gonna build now is just a cinematic logo so this is the minimum component you can create or the base component you will you get when you enter the component editor and uh, what we are gonna make is we are gonna change some attributes here and uh, create the cinematic logo with some uh, physics uh, parameters as well so uh, let's start by adding or uploading the cinematic logo this is a GLB file we can uh, come back here now and change the geometry so we are gonna select a mesh here instead and now once we have changed it to a mesh we are gonna take the logo and here you see that we get this 3D logo here let's rotate this a little bit and we are gonna change the rotation like this great so we have it center and properly placed in there or properly rotated we can change its color just by adding a material and 
let's paint it with the Simomatic blue. Great. So here we have it. Uh, we are gonna save this and come back here and we are we can now change the description add some keywords if we want another description and save all this great now we can come back yes everything saved so now we can add the component but in order to add it we need to have it in a library so let's go back here and now search within our components the our new component this one and add it to the library great we actually forgot to take a thumbnail of it let's go back here and take a picture of it great now we can save and go back now we have the thumbnail we have the component in the library we can come back here and now yes we can add the component so let's place it somewhere here we see that now when we click play this component doesn't have any physics uh, collision shape so that's why or mass so that's why it's not falling down we can easily change that and actually now we can access the component editor from here and we can do the changes we need so for example we can just add here a collision shape and you see here that we we have created just a big box and we need to adjust its size so it adjusts to the shape of the visual it's the easiest way to create a collision shape. very quite cheap for the physics engine we need to change the size it wasn't correct so it's gonna be two meters here 0 0.3 here let's see now it looks better it's not super accurate but we could leave it like that maybe a bit lower here yeah this looks quite nice we can make it a bit smaller in the height three yep and now if we save it and we go back it will ask if we want to reload the system to get the updates in that uh, component if we didn't save the system it's better to make an upload and now we can do a reload again and we will get the components in the same position and now let's see what happens we just added the collision but it didn't fall down because we didn't add the mass to it so let's go back and add here the inertial element where we can decide which is will be the mass of the component so we can leave it with one the default value we go back we ask to reload and now hopefully when we click the box falls down it will actually interact as well with the other elements so if we do this you see how the elements interact with each other This was just an introduction, but we hope you get some inspiration so you want to start browsing components and creating your own ones. If you have a nice idea, please make a publish request. We are going to review your component and publish it with the rest of the community. So as always, read the description, tell us what you think, and see you in the next video.